thank you everyone for coming uh, coming on today. Um, I'm just going to speak briefly, probably for about 15 or 20 minutes, about um, hope, not hate, and in particular Joe Mulhall, their chief researcher, who basically doesn't. It seems to just make it up as he goes along. Um, uh, I've just looked at his um, Blue Sky feed just now, which Blue Sky, for those who don't know, is is like a, um, a lefty version of Twitter, where basically it's like Twitter was 10 years ago or so, and um, they are all protected and they can say what they want and we can't say anything. And uh, he was complaining that he put up on Twitter and on Blue Sky that his, his show had been cancelled and that on Blue Sky he was getting loads of sympathy. And he said on Twitter um, his feed just got full up with people discussing what was the best version of Mein Kampf. And I thought, well, I've just looked through your feed and I didn't see that. So I had a look and one person's mentioned Mein Kampf, but it's only in a joking way. But uh, <laughs> I suppose all his, all, the, all his weirdo mates on on Blue Sky probably um, probably believe that. Um, all right. So what, what I'm going to start is with here is I've, I've lost it already. I've just got to grab a book. Just a second. This is um, Joe Mulhall's new book. He can't promote it on Sunday, so I'll do my best to promote it on him for it, on here for him uh, for him today. Basically, the book it's called "Rebel Sounds: Music as a Resistance" by Joe Mulhall. And basically, in the book, he glorifies groups and terrorist organisations like the MK, who was the terrorist wing of the um, ANC, and uh, and the IRA, um, well Irish. Um, Republicans, the IRA, basically. Um, and uh, to be honest, I haven't actually read the book yet. I, I bought it about a month month ago when it first came out, just under a month ago. And um, I've had to, I've been reading some other stuff anyway. I read like the first chapter, which is about the um, Irish Republican struggle, and um, I've gone over it again. And then basically, in this book. It's, a, it's absolutely disgusting, and it, it does, similar to his previous books, it highlights just what a rancid individual that Joe Mulhall is and the organisation he, he works for. Um, if this was any of us, obviously not supporting the IRA, but supporting any other band organisation or anything like that, they'd be trying to get us arrested. It might not quite cross the threshold to get arrested, but it's pretty close to it. And... Um, on here, I'm, like I said, I, I might, I'll probably do a couple more videos with, about this book, but while, once I've read some more chapters, but we we'll stick to the first chapter for now, which is about the, um, which is about the Irish Republicans, and he's got a list here of is it eight songs, eight songs by different people, part of the Irish Republican struggle, um, and supposedly they are, it's all these different groups, not just the Irish Republicans, but the Africans and the South Americans and the um, South Africans, have basically used music to bond themselves together and fight off oppression. This is how, how they sort of see it. And um, most of the songs are pretty pretty disgusting and things. You've got things like the Red Flag. And then uh, one that particularly springs to mind is a very famous song, The Wolf Tones have released it. It was by a guy called Dominic Behan, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, I don't care. Um, come out, you black and tans. And um, I don't know, is, it, is anyone, is everyone, I assume everyone's, whether, whether they actually know the song or not, I'm, sh I'm sure everyone's at least heard, heard of this song. And basically, this song, it's um, supposedly a satirical song mocking um, British soldiers, and particularly the, the black and tans, who were mainly... Um, ex-British soldiers that were um, helping out the Royal Irish Constabulary during the Easter Rising when they when the IRA were executing people and all the other horrible things that, that they were doing. And um, in the song, it mocks, it mocks the men for having medals from Flanders. Um, basically, it mocks them for fighting in, in some of the worst battles of the First World War. And uh, it, it, it's... I did have the words here somewhere. I'm not sure where I've. Um, I'm just going to have to um, quickly look them. Uh, I was quickly looking up these uh, the lyrics to this song. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically the writer of the song is singing about how in the 1920s. This is obviously after 
the Republic of Ireland had gained independence from from Britain. Um, how his father used to come home drunk and taunt his um, Protestant and some pro-British Catholic neighbours with this song about the the black and tans, and uh, it says, "I'm not going to I'm not going to sing it or, or or play it because it's just a horrible song." But um, a couple of the words here is, "Show your wife how you won medals down in Flanders. Tell tell her how the IRA." made you run like hell away from the green and lovely lanes of Kil Chandra. Um, so basically, it's mocking British soldiers who, who fought in the First World War. And you, and um, and it, it was done as well in a way to try and intimidate the Protestants that were still living in the south of Ireland um, shortly after the um, Irish War of Independence. And it's... It's an absolutely sickening song. The sort of beat to it sounds re reasonably entertaining and catchy, but the actual song is actually sickening what it's about. And it goes on um, about how we beat the Zulus who only had spears, but they didn't only have spears. In the film, they only had spears. In real life, they had rifles as well. They well outnumbered our, our brave lads. And uh, my regiment, the Royal Engineers, fought, uh, fought Rourke's Drift. And... Um, these savage Zulus tore men from the infirmary, infirmary, and they were um, basically torturing them all night. So when the sort of fighting stopped in the night time, all the men still inside Rourke's Drift could hear was the screams of their comrades who were already injured had been pulled from the burning inf infirmary of Rourke's Drift. Um, again, so it's absolutely sickening. So this is what Joe Mohall's all about with his... Um, with his books and uh, and what he writes, he also wrote in there that because he he got a free like world tour or something with writing this book. He went to all these different places. He was in North and South America, um, South Africa, um, Ukraine, and obviously the Republic of Ireland. I don't know if he probably went to Northern Ireland as well. And uh, when he was in um, South Africa, he, he visited Robin Island, and. Um, and when he was there, he was, I think he was saying it was, he was given a tour by, um, by, uh, an, or I don't know, several, or at least one um, ex inmate from Robin Island gave the tour. It, it was a bit unclear as to whether the guy was a, a, an actual MK terrorist or not, or there was other prisoners there as well. So the guy might have just been some other type of criminal. But, um, an ex prisoner of Robin Island gave him, gave him a tour. And then, um, when he was leaving, I think he was getting on a boat or however you leave the island, and um, the guy kind of waves it to him, and he, for some reason, thought that the guy was doing a black power salute, so he'd done a black power salute back to him, like a complete and utter idiot. But who would who would do a black power salute? It's like, it's, it's pathetic when the blacks do it, let alone a white guy. I say a white guy, he's not really, he's not properly white, is he? I think he's, um, he's like... Um, half irish quarter german quarter indian but anyway a white looking or white indian guy doing a a black power salute is absolutely pathetic and uh and that's 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 just the kind of guy he is um well anyway he's, he's he releases books he releases a book every year or so and i've previously been along to two of his um two of his book launches i went to the um drums in the distance one a few years ago and i managed to sneak into the middle of it before um i've managed to sneak into the middle of it before before it started so in order to throw me out they would have had to like make a real big scene and like chairs would have had to go flying so i managed to stay in there for that and then at the end of it he said um i've got three free copies of my book and um, there's only three copies there and there, it's a first come, first serve basis. Whoever, whoever whoever gets them first, and happened to be right near me. So someone else grabbed one. I'll grab the second one, and then someone else grabbed grabbed the third one. And as I got up to leave, he said, "I won for the national front guy." And I I laughed and said, "Yeah, thanks very much." And um and left. I recorded it on audio. I wasn't videoing at the time, but I, I had this recorded on audio. But he clearly said, "One for the national front guy," and I said, "Thanks," and left with left with a book. And um. At the launch of this book, the, the one um, that, he, that he previously done about a month ago, the launch for this book has just just come out now. 
I went along to that as well. They tried to throw me out at the beginning and I refused to go. And uh, and he said that he said that I stole a book at his last meeting, even though he clearly gave it to me. It just shows what a barefaced liar he is, that he'll actually lie, lie to you to your face. You know, and I was there. I know I was given the book. I wouldn't steal a book. I wouldn't. I'm not a criminal. I don't go around stealing anything. But if, if I was to steal something, I might as well steal something better than a, better than a book that's worth about 15 quid. So um, so anyway, he's lied about that. And um, he had a um, which is what this meeting's about. There was a book, um, a promotion thing going on at a pub on Sunday from six o'clock. And uh, it, 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 I saw it online by chance. So um, I did think about going along again, but I thought I've been along to two of them. They're obviously hostile to me. They might be, um, might be uh, the um, he might he might be on the lookout for me anyway. So I thought I won't go along. So I thought about asking someone else to go along and maybe covertly recall them, or um, or something like that. But uh, and and then I thought no, we might as well do do what they do and just try and get the meeting can cancelled. So like I said, I phoned, I phoned the, the pub up. Um, first I spoke to a barmaid, then she put me onto the manager. The manager asked me to send an email. I, I did the email, I put in the, um, all the information, um, not all, I say all the information. I put in examples of them threatening venues. And one of the venues I used was the uh, Robert Farrison meeting down in um, Shepparton. Um, not long before the lockdown, it's about 2018 or 2019, and uh, and basically that Hope Not Hate and Kevin Maguire from the Mirror were intimidating the venue. They were sharing the the address on Twitter. Um, I don't know who actually did it, but apparently someone phoned the hotel saying it was about to get attacked by a gang of anti-fascists. But Shepparton's out of the way. That wasn't really going to happen. They weren't. They didn't have that much notice for it, so there wasn't there wasn't going to be any massive attack. But the hotel was intimidated, and um, we had to leave the leave the venue. Fortunately enough, Robert Farrison had already spoken, and half the meeting had already already taken place. But um, but they they obviously got that that venue shut down, and uh, and they've done it to loads of other venues. And interestingly enough, there's um, what's the, I believe there's a music venue, uh, a music event going on up in Scotland on on Saturday, and uh, literally just before I phoned the hotel, um, just before I phoned the pub to try and get uh, Molehall's meeting cancelled, they was putting stuff up about trying to find the venue up in Scotland. So I don't know if they found the venue or even if it is going on or if it is up there, but they're trying to get a. Um, a music a music event shut down in Scotland at the moment, so it just goes to show the hip hypocrisy of them that they're actually at the, this very moment trying to get someone's venue shut down, when uh, and complaining that they've had their ven venue shut down. So I'm anti-fascism. Oh, I'll put that one up here. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, so it's actually um, yeah. So the guy responded to my email saying that he wasn't going to cancel the the meeting, and uh, and then like I said, I started sharing things on on social media, on Twitter, and on um, uh, Telegram and WhatsApp and Facebook, and then then the venue changed the uh, the meeting. To be fair, I don't like doing things like that. Um, even scumbags like Mulhall, Lowell's, um, Collins, people like that, even scumbags like that. The way I see it is everyone's got a right to their opinion and I'd much rather debate them or, or, or even better someone who's better at debating than me debate them. But they don't, they're not like, all they want to do is have their say and silence and silence everyone else. They just want to tell lies and then um, and get away with it. Um, like if I get things wrong from time to time. I've put things on the internet that are incorrect, which I'm sure everyone has done. And uh, I've been embarrassed by it. Um, and immediately I've wanted to, without any pressure on me, as soon as I know something's wrong, I want to retract it. I want to either delete it or apologise or or something like that. I put someone's name out once. This is going back six or seven years as, as well. Um, someone had um, pushed a police officer. Um, this is one of the... the 
supposed anti-fascist um, trying to get her up or pretending to try and get her us at a demo outside Luna House. And he, he was quite physical, a very small woman police officer. And um, I thought I'd identified him as someone else. And I put up this guy's name and uh, and it turned out it wasn't him. And I was I immediately apologised um, and corrected the video that I'd put up saying that it wasn't that it wasn't this guy because it's, it's I like people to believe what I say and I like and the best way to do that is to be as truthful as possible and keep things up there but th these commies are completely the the opposite opposite to that put another one of Joe's uh, things up here commies are just asshole gimps they don't feel shame and again they, they definitely don't feel shame I think I've mentioned already He's over on Blue Sky now saying that people are talking about Mein Kampf on his, um, on, on his Twitter feed when one person's mentioned it once for a joke. But he's trying to make out that like half a dozen or a dozen people are having an in-depth conversation about it. I don't know, they might have, they might have started an in-depth conversation about it by now, but uh, when I started this stream, um, uh, they hadn't. So uh, that's about all I've got to say about um, what's happened like the past sort of day or so, other than hopefully... It's uh, a sign of things to come. Hopefully, if more people can keep an eye out for um, for Hope Not Hate events, hopefully we can start getting them all shut down because if, if they're getting our events shut down, then we, we get theirs shut down. It's, it's the only way ahead. Um, has anyone got any questions or, or anything else to say? Another one there. They are going after everything white people love. Yep, I think they are, yeah. Something else I might have a talk about soon is um, Diane Abbott's uh, book. I just read that recently. That was quite quite funny. In it, she's um, uh, she uses derogatory terms for other people from the Caribbean who aren't from Jamaica. Apparently, the Jamaicans call them smallies, and um, she was going on about that in her book. Um, other than that, I think her grandmother had six children by five different men. She's like, <laughs> apparently that's quite normal out there but um how much support are you getting for the national front well not a lot well not enough really because um i think it stems back to a year or so before the lockdown when we had all our social media and lost our, our website um then um then there was obviously the lockdown and we lost richard edmonds and things like that um so uh and it's it's nationalism in total, really. It's a matter of trying to get something off the ground. Um, Tommy Robinson's been in the way of things for ages. Um, personally, I believe, whether or not he, he's aware of it or not, but hope not hate, deliberately promote him. Um, I think if it was his people that had got their meeting shut down, his name would, would be getting mentioned loads of times about this. But, um, but it's not because the, uh, the media and... Um, and hope not hate and social media and that do so much to try and push Tommy Robinson and promote Tommy Robinson that, that he organises an event and loads of people turn up for it. Nothing actually happens. Um, he's got no intention of doing anything other than making money, but um, that's it. I think the, the media and that have tried to push people in the direction of the grifters, which is why um, not just the National Front, but most um, proper patriotic groups and parties um, are, are are struggling at the moment um hopefully now i'm gonna have a bit more time on my hands so uh so we'll try and get a few more things going and try and um uh try and establish a bit more i'm setting up a um an online newsletter for the national front if you go on to the uh, national front website netfront.info um there's now a um a subscribe uh, page on that so uh, so anyone, whether they're a member or not, can stick their, their name and email address down there and I'll start emailing them. I've only literally just set that up a couple of weeks ago, so that's that's a new thing. But hopefully we'll try and build up some a, a lot more support as soon as possible. Uh, Remembrance Sunday went, went reasonably well. There was um, The attendance wasn't as much as, as it could have been, but it was all good people there. We all held our heads up high. We walked along the road. Um, one or two people sort of booed us or jeered us or whatever. The vast majority of people um, were supportive. We got um, we got clapped and cheered quite a bit. 
Um, there's a pub that we go past that so we usually get quite a bit of support, and there was support there as well. So, um, so that um, so that went well. Although, um, yeah, yeah, that did uh, that went um, that went about as well as as could be expected. What's that one? Has Nick invited you to his tent yet? I don't even know. I don't know what that is. That one. Hope for destruction, hate on white people. That's how low these organisations are. Yep, I agree with that 100%. And they're so well funded as well, Hope Not Hate. It's another thing that's quite amazing. Um, they put a thing out about how many leaflets they put out in the G was it the GLA campaign or the national election, um, general election. It was one of them, and it was only in the sort of tens of thousands. And they've got like 20-odd um, like paid employees they're advertising for another four positions and they're advertising for paid positions as local organizers so it's when the bmp was doing well the, the local organizers were volunteers there were obviously people that were be, being paid but that was on a, on a national level regional and local organizers were, were all um were all volunteers so i think and um, and they organised these events. Like the last one I went to of Joe Mulhalls, there was only, other than myself, there was probably about ten people there, including him and his dad. Um, so it's like they ha they haven't got much actual support um, on the ground. The only time they get a lot of people to turn up is if they've got someone like Billy Bragg promoting something, or they speak at the Labour Party conference or whatever like that, and they might get a hundred or so people. To, to turn up for it when we went and opposed um hope not hate and billy bragg down in margate there, there weren't a lot of people queuing up to get to get in there um i don't know if it was standing or seating where they were um watching it but if it was seating you could probably just sit wherever you wanted rather than wherever you, your ticket was allocated then i don't know how many people went in we saw about 50 or 60 maybe 100 people going in and um and 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 that's like billy bragg or, well, I've got no time for him. He, he used to be quite a well-known um, celebrity, and you'd have thought they'd have got a few more people down there. So, be good to see you at a patriotic alternative event. Um, I went to one of their protests in Leeds, I think, just over over a year ago. Um, uh, the National Front doesn't mind working with organisations, so we're prepared to do stuff with. Uh, with, with patriotic alternative so may, maybe something will, will come from that uh I'm, i sort of talk to a few other people in other organizations from time to time so there's there's no reason why we can't we can't try and do a bit more especially when we're up against people like hope not hate and people that are so so well funded has anyone got anything else Billy Bragg lives in a two million pound house for the many, not the few. Yeah, <laughs> I think that sums him up quite well as, as well. He also has got like it sounds like a fake accent to me. It sounds like he's um, he's probably sort of lost his working class accent and then tries to tries tries to bring it back. But um, yeah, I don't. And his son as well. His son's like a little posh kid who cries about the um, almost cries about the environment in. in in like YouTube or whatever platform it was, video, and then then he's playing at Glastonbury, powered by diesel generators, and people have driven for miles to get there, and, and, and all of these. It would seem to use like disposable tents. People have spent like three or four hundred pound for their tickets, and then they buy a tent for thirty quid to take down to take down there with them. They've obviously got no intention of bringing it back. They just know they can set it up and then. And then just leave it there. And there's like tons and tons of rubbish. And like I said, it's all powered by diesel generators. The event's been going on for years. There's no reason why they can't be powered by the national grid, have solar panels there, and all this kind of thing. With, with all these lovey dovies who bang on about the environment, but all they want to do is bang on about it and not not do anything about it themselves. I wonder how many people fly in each year for the um, for the um, whatever it was called, Glastonbury. Yeah.
how many vintage guitars has he got? <laughs> I wouldn't. I've never. Uh, I've never been invited around there. And to, and to be fair, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know a, a decent guitar from a rubbish one anyway. I don't really know too much about the uh, Homeland Party, um, and um, I, I don't really know know too much about Kenny Smith or any or anyone either. So I wouldn't like to I wouldn't like to speculate on uh, on any of that. Um, has anyone got anything else? What I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and do a few more more of these um, these. Um, call them meetings it's not really meetings but these um these live streams um because i think it's been probably like nearly a year since i've done the, done the last one but i'm going to try and do them every couple of weeks or something so uh so keep an eye out and i'll have another one another one coming relatively soon hopefully if not get in the comment section and have a go at me for not doing it but um thanks very much for coming everyone and hopefully we can get to have another go at hope not hate in the not too distant future thank you very much everyone Take care. Goodbye.